Hello and welcome to another exciting class of physics and today we are discussing about the relation between potential difference and the current flowing through a conductor. Let us try to understand this uh, with the help of an illustration. Suppose we have a wire, a conducting wire, say made up of copper and these are the ends of the wire. This end, let us call it A and the other end, we shall call it B. And between these two ends, we are applying a potential difference. So we can say the potential difference between these two points A and B is something. Let us call that potential difference V. So the potential difference PD is equal to V in volts. And let us assume that some current is flowing through this wire. Now when we say some current is flowing through this wire, what actually is happening is electrons are flowing through this wire. And the rate of flow of these electrons is what, what we call electric current that we have discussed earlier also. So the current flowing through the wire, we call it as I. Now you might have already experienced it in your daily lives that if the potential difference goes up, then the current also goes up. You can see that if the potential difference which we normally call voltage in our day-to-day -day lives, if the voltage goes up, then we see that things become much more brighter. The fan starts moving more faster. The light starts shining more brightly. It shows that the current flowing through the uh, conductors, through the wires is now greater. So if the potential difference rises, or as we say, as if the voltage rises, then the current also rises. So the relation between potential difference and current is that if potential difference increases, then current also increases. Mathematically, we can put it in this way that the potential difference is directly proportional to the current. Now, this is not always true. There are some other cases where this may not be true, but if temperature and other physical conditions remain constant, then this thing is more or less true. That is the potential difference increases and then the current also increases. So potential difference can be considered to be directly proportional to the current flowing through the wire if temperature and other factors remain constant. So mathematically putting it, we have V proportional to I. And we know that if we want to replace this proportionality with an equality, then what we have to do is we have to multiply the right hand side with some constant. So we are now replacing this proportionality with an equality. And so the right hand side has to be multiplied by a constant. And that constant we will call R or better the resistance of the conductor. So the resistance of the conductor comes into play now and we can easily see from this equation that the resistance of the conductor is actually a ratio between the potential difference applied between the ends of the conductor and the current flowing through the conductor. And if temperature and other physical factors remain constant, then this ratio, that is the ratio between the potential difference applied between the ends of the conductor and the current flowing through the conductor, this ratio always remains a constant and that constant is known as the resistance of the conductor and this equation V is equal to IR or V is equal to RI is also known as the Ohm's law. So we are going to put down the Ohm's law in writing over here and the Ohm's law is as such. We can say that temperature and other factors 
remaining constant the potential difference applied across the ends of the conductor is directly proportional to the current flowing through the conductor okay so that is what we call the ohms law the statement of the ohms law and the mathematical equation of the ohms law is right here that you are looking at so this is the mathematical equation of the ohms law now the the physical quantity called resistance this is a very important uh, is an important quantity and the si unit of this uh, physical quantity is named after the person who actually gave us this relation the si unit of resistance is known as ohm and it has got a very uh, funny symbol its symbol is the greek letter omega it is written in this way the greek letter omega so this is omega and this is the symbol for ohm so we are not going to call this omega we are going to call this ohm and that is the si unit for resistance let us quickly take a look at one of one such example suppose the potential difference applied between these two ends of the conductor is say 200 volt so v is equal to 200 volt and because of this potential difference there is some current flowing through the conductor and let us assume that the current flowing through the conductor is 5 ampere so then let us calculate the resistance of this conductor so as we see from ohm's law that r is equal to v by i and hence r in this case will be equal to the value of the potential difference that is 200 volt divided by the value of the current that is 5 ampere so that will give us you can easily calculate it you can easily cancel the numerator and denominator common factors and then you will get 40 ohm so that will be written in this way you can write 40 and after that you put this symbol that is ohm so we call it 40 ohm so this was a short discussion about the resistance of a conductor we'll come back very soon to discuss about some other important concepts of electricity thank you